Welcome back after lunch. We are going to ramp up our activities with 2D arrays. I'm going to start with something relatively simple, and then we're going to move on to some harder projects. Right now, I need you to find a partner, push your test desks together, and take out a piece of paper. OK, uh, has everybody got a partnership here? All right, terrific. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is a relatively easy warm-up exercise to get you familiar with 2D arrays. Your brain is used to arrays and array lists right now, and the second dimension is just going to take a little while for it to sink in. So I'm going to start with a relatively simple exercise. So a couple of summers ago, uh, I got bored waiting for school to start, and I decided to build a little uh, game or a practice tool to help students get familiar with different parts of Java. And so what I'm going to ask you to do is take out your computers and go over here to West Hill CS, which is the main computer site for this school. And then I'm going to ask you to click on this uh, West Hill CSA uh, page right here. And then you can see if you scroll down that there is a tool here called CSA Games. So we're going to just uh, go there for a second. And it'll bring up this tool right here. Now, it defaults to the string game, but we left strings way back in unit one. So I'm going to ask you to pick arrays right here. And we're going to start off with 2D. And to make it a little bit easier, we're going to turn the labels on initially. And if you restart it here, at some point, it will give you a two-dimensional problem like that. This is going to be a mix of 1 and 2D, by the way. You're not going to just get 2D. And what you have to do here is you have to figure out if this is the array, you have to figure out which element here is 2, 3. You have to figure it out. Now you can see that this is a fairly easy thing to do because the numbers are all given to you here. So here I would pick out row 2, which is this row right here, and item 3, which is uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 right here. And so I would just pick that. And you can see that I got that uh, right, I think. I got three points for that. And it moved on to the next one. This one's a simpler one. It's a one-dimensional problem. And so you go through that. When you get bored with that in probably about two minutes, you can make it a little harder on yourself by turning the labels off. And you can see now you have to do some counting in order to figure out where, which ones to click on. And then you'll play this for another two minutes, and you'll get bored with that, hopefully. And you, to make it harder, you're going to turn on the loops. Now, when you turn the loops on, you can see now it gets a little bit more challenging. You have to figure out all the elements that are going to be printed here. So you have to select them all. Okay? Get even one wrong, it will reduce your score back to zero, and you have to start over. Now, for some of you, even this will be too easy. And so if that's the case, then you can turn the sound and the timer on, and then it's a completely different game with lots of stress, but like a fun kind of stress. And then it makes a really annoying sound when you lose, like a little cuckoo clock sound. So you decide what level you want to play at. You can have the labels turned on or off. You can have the timer and the sound on or off. And you can get going here. And we're just going to play for a few minutes to get ourselves acquainted with two-dimensional arrays. Uh, sure, sir. So what we want to know is what are all the cells that are going to be selected for this particular one? So to do this one, for example, you assume that the outer loop R is going to be set to 1 initially and C is going to be set to 3. So uh, that means that we're going to pick item 1, 3. So row 1 is this row and column 3 is this column. So I should have clicked on it. I didn't. I clicked on this one, which was a mistake. That's why it's showing up in red. But this would definitely be part of the solution. And then the inner loop would run again, so then the column would be four. So these two would be selected on the first run of the outer loop. And then the next time we go do the, uh, the loop, the R goes to two, so it would pick this row. And then it would select these two elements. So basically, I need to pick these two and these two, and then that would be all the ones that are chosen. OK, I need you to look up here now. I realize that this particular game can get pretty repetitive fairly quickly. But if you're struggling with 2D arrays, this may not be a bad place to understand how to parse them, what the limits are, et cetera. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how 2D arrays are used in mathematics. And um, 
When you leave West Hill and you move on to college, many of you are going to be pursuing some sort of a STEM career. That means either like in computer science or engineering or science, whatever. If you decide to pursue a STEM career, there are some lab classes that you're definitely, sorry, there's some math classes that you're definitely going to encounter in college. You'll probably end up having to take a couple of semesters of calculus. You'll probably end up taking a course in differential equations, and you'll probably also take a full semester course on something called linear algebra. Linear algebra involves something called a matrix, and a matrix is just the mathematical definition of a two-dimensional array. And so therefore, even if you were to leave my class and say, I never want to see another computer program again, you're going to need to understand two-dimensional arrays because you're going to need to know how to add them, subtract them, multiply them, invert them, find their eigenvalues, all kinds of things. So linear algebra is a full semester course in math that deals with two-dimensional arrays. So let's take a look at an example of how we might want to do some simple arithmetic operations with arrays. So let's say I have this array right here. And let's say I want to add it to this array over here. What does your intuition tell you will be the result? I would like you to work on this on a piece of paper and work on it with your partner and see if you can come up with an answer. So just to be clear, I want to take this array, A, and I want to add it to this array, B, to produce a new array, C. That's what I want to do. And if you're thinking to yourself that 3 and 4 get added together, you're on the wrong track. OK. Um, uh, I would like a uh, volunteer from the audience. Uh, Ms. Siegel, um, how would I add these two arrays together? So what would be the top left-hand corner value that I would put there, Ms.? OK, so how did you get the 4? OK, so we're going to add these two numbers together and get 4. And what's going to go over here, Ms.? And then how about over here? OK, there you go. So that's a fairly simple operation. You see that, right? Now, question, what has to be true about the dimensions of the two arrays if we want to add them together? Please discuss. Mr. Baker, sir, can you tell me what is true about the, the dimensions of the two arrays if I want to add them together? So they have to have the same number of rows and columns, width and height, like he mentioned. Okay. So if the number of rows is different, you can't add them. If the number of columns is different, you can't add them. OK, here's what I want you to do next. I want you to take out your computers now and write a method. OK, I want, you to write, I want you to write three methods for me. The first one just prints a 1D array all on one line. The next one prints a 2D array. I think we did these earlier, but we're going to need them for today for helping us print our answers. So print a 2D array just in the shape that it's in, like in a rectangle. We, I think we talked about that last class. And then I want you to write this method called add 2D that basically takes two uh, 2D arrays as parameters, like A and B, right? Adds them together and returns the resulting array. If the two arrays that are given do not have the same dimensions, you should return a null instead of returning an array. So we're going to write this method. It's going to be called add 2D. It's going to have two parameters. Each parameter is a two-dimensional array. We'll call the first parameter A. We'll call the second parameter B. It's going to add A and B together, but if the dimensions are different, you can't add them, so it's going to return a null. But if the dimensions are the same and it's OK to add them, then you add them and return a brand new two-dimensional array. So the same thing we just did on pencil and paper here that Ms. Siegel went through, I want you to write code to do that. And it should work for any size arrays, not just the 2 by 4 that I showed on the board or whatever it is. Okay? It should work for any, any size arrays. So please work on that now. You have to write your own test code for this to see if it works or not. So write a main method that has the test code in it. Then write the, the method here called uh, add2d. Uh, get it all working and try it out. OK, uh, I know that some of you may not have quite finished this exercise, but in the interest of time, I'm going to have to move on. So I'm going to go over the solution to problem three with you. And then I'm going to leave you some open time to work on problems four and five. So let's look at problem three together. First, this was my little method to print a one-dimensional array. Hopefully you remember that from way back in unit six. 
And here is how to print a two-dimensional array. I think we went over this last class. Notice that these are prints here and a print ln here, so it creates a new line at the end of every row. And then here is the method that I have to add the two arrays together. If the number of rows doesn't match or the number of columns doesn't match, I return a null. You could have also combined these two into a single statement with an or. That's fine, too. And now over here, I'm going to, if they do match, I'm going to create a new array. Right? That's going to hold my answer. And then I, I go through and I add the two arrays together for each element, and I create my answer, and I return the answer. Notice that the return type here is a two-dimensional array. You see that, right? And we've made these static just so that I don't have to create any objects, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, so these are all utility methods. That's why I've made them static here. And now let's look at the tester code. So I've created these two arrays right here. You can make any two arrays as long as they are the same dimensions. And then over here, I call the new method called the add2d. And it creates the array and returns it to me. So I just need a pointer to save the two-dimensional array. I call that pointer my answer array. In terms of allocating memory, I don't allocate memory here because the add2d allocates the memory for the array for me. You see right here is the memory allocation that I'm looking for right here. So here's the memory allocation right there in line 23. Right there, that's the memory allocation for the new array. And so it, it creates the new array and hands it to me. All I need is a pointer to point to it. And then I'm going to print out that answer right there. So I'm going to run this for you. And you can see that when I run it, it comes up with these answers right here. Let me just show this to you side by side so you can see it. These are the two original arrays, and here is the sum like that. Okay. So if you had trouble with this, this is pretty much the level that your first quiz is going to be on, something of this kind of a thing. Uh, let's look at the other two exercises. So here, uh, exercise number four, they want you to collapse the rows. And so what we're going to do there, like this. So we have an array like this. And we want to collapse the rows. So this original array, the dimensions of the array are two by three, right? Two rows by three columns. So we want to collapse the rows. So we're going to add all the rows, uh, row elements together. So we're going to add four and three is seven, plus five is 12. So we're going to produce a 12 here. And then here we're going to go 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 7 is 15, like that. And so we would return a one-dimensional array that is the collapsed version of this two-dimensional array. We would return it like this. When we print this array, though, it's going to print as a one-dimensional. It'll print left to right. It'll print like this. But that's OK. All right? That's question number three, I think, or four. That's number four. And number five is we do the same thing except we collapse the columns. So here, if we were to collapse the columns, we would add these two together to get five, these two together to get 10, and these together to get 12. And so that would be the other way we could collapse it. So I would like you to take the time that we have left together, which is about 25 minutes, 